Welcome to Parks and Places Online. Today, we're talking about computer storage and not one of our beautiful parks or places. But I'll be back to producing those videos soon. NAS, or Network Attached Storage, is an alternative method to store data that you're probably storing on your disk drive today. This video will cover my installation and setup of my NAS system. It'll probably take me several days to do as I learn, but after watching this video, you should be able to do it quicker. Let me start by explaining what NAS is and why you might consider it as your storage solution. I'll do that by explaining what my current storage solution is and what I hope to get when I'm done with my setup. This Windows desktop computer is my storage solution today. The mini tower design holds two disks, drive C and D. Between our music library, photos, and videos, we have over four terabytes of data. If you're wondering how anyone can accumulate four terabytes of data, you probably don't subscribe to this channel because that is where I store all the content for creating my YouTube videos. This desktop computer is also Darlene's everyday computer, so it has all her stuff, mostly on the My Documents folder. All this data on this desktop computer is backed up to an external USB drive. Not getting too much into computer backups, but if you value your data, you need to be backing it up. If you value your data as much as I do, then you need to have your data backed up to a secure off-site location, like in a bank safe deposit box. I have multiple Seagate external USB hard drives. I swap out the daily backup with the off-site backup on a somewhat regular basis. The desktop computer acts as our data server and as Darlene's personal computer. The folders are shared and I can access the data from my laptop. The solution has worked great for years. Here's the problem. The desktop computer has reached the end of its lifespan. It's been getting the blue screen of death more and more often. Additionally, Darlene wants the freedom of a laptop to be able to be used anywhere and not just here in the office. I could get a new mini tower computer that would act as a file server for our photos, videos, and music, and a laptop for Darlene, but having three computers, one desktop and two laptops, for two people seems like overkill and expensive. I'm building a solution with a NAS and two laptops. The NAS will be the permanent storage for photos, videos, and music. I also plan on backing up the laptops to the NAS, primarily the My Documents directory, but the official copy of the data will still be on the laptops. If it works as I hope, the solution seems to make sense for a large number of households. Also, as the name states, NAS is attached to your network. Anything attached to your network can then access the files on your NAS. This includes your computers, your phones, your tablets, your smart TVs. We'll see how much of that I can get included in this video. So, which NAS to get? Mine is actually still in the box, so I can't exactly give you a recommendation because I haven't tried it out yet. But I can tell you what I decided on. In the price range I was looking at, there are two brands, Western Digital and Synology. I considered the Western Digital MyCloud EX2 Ultra, but I ultimately settled on the Synology Disk Station. I'll put the specific model numbers in the description below. The Western Digital is $149. The Synology is $300. In both cases, I'm referring to the model that has two disk bays, but with no disks. The main reason why I opted for Synology is because of its operating system and the features it has. Yes, that's right, these things come with an operating system. Not Windows or Linux, but a proprietary operating system that's specifically designed for file sharing. Western Digital has their own proprietary operating system, and Synology has their own proprietary operating system. It's the features of the Synology operating system that made me choose them. Both models that I considered had two bays for up to two disks. The marketing implies that you're supposed to use the second bay for RAID 1, or disk mirroring. I'm not a fan of RAID. If you have a file that gets corrupted, then RAID makes sure that you have two copies of the corrupted file. If you want a version of the file before it was corrupted, then you need to go to your backup, regardless if you have RAID. RAID is not a backup. But if you have a backup, why do you need RAID? The only use case where RAID is helpful 
is if your primary disk fails. Without RAID, you lose all your data since your last backup. That's a risk I'm okay with. Over the many years and many computers I've had, I have had drives go bad, but they have never gone bad without a warning. I've always been able to swap them out before they became toast, although I'm sure I just jinxed myself. If you buy a NAS without disks, then you need to buy a disk, or maybe multiple disks. I purchased only a single disk because I don't intend to use RAID. There are basically three disk manufacturers, Western Digital, Seagate, and Toshiba. You can purchase a Synology branded disk, but from what I understand, that's a Toshiba disk with a Synology label over the top of it. You can go with any brand disk. You don't need to buy a Western Digital disk to go on a Western Digital NAS, and you don't need to buy a Synology disk to go into a Synology NAS. I went with Seagate's Ironwolf 12 terabyte drive. I actually have pretty good experience with Seagate, so that was my choice. The 12 terabyte disk drive cost me 200 bucks, so my entire NAS solution cost me 500 bucks. I'll be using my existing external USB drives as a backup, but if you don't have one, then you need to consider that in your cost as well. Now for the unboxing. To be honest, I don't understand why unboxing items is a thing on the internet, but... So, here is the Synology DS224 Plus NAS system. Comes in a pretty generic box with a sticker on it. Alright, so this thing comes... Wrapped up. It's actually always surprised how small these things are. They look much bigger on the internet, but uh, whatever the dimensions are of this thing, it's actually pretty darn small. So it comes with uh, a quick start guide, and I assume this is the power supply, power cord. It comes with two network cables, and then this is uh, the power supply, and it does come with mounting screws for your drive, if those would be needed. So, uh, that is the contents of the box, so we've got power cords, uh, network cables, screws, power supply. So what I really wanted to show you on this box, okay, is the USB port. Actually, it has two USB ports. So there's this USB port here on the front. I would use this, I guess, probably never, um, <laughs> but I guess maybe the intention is to use this for um, getting data, you know, from maybe a USB external drive into this. Um, but more importantly to me is there's a USB port on the back. So that is where I would be plugging in my external USB drive to make my backups. I don't know how this opens, so I need to figure that out. All right, here is the Seagate Ironwolf drive. Comes with its useless paperwork. And the I bought the 12 terabyte drive model. I think that's all of this in here. All right, so again, I've purchased the Seagate Iron Wolf disc. So, uh, 12 terabyte model. Although I haven't used the Iron Wolf specifically in the past, I have uh, had a lot of success. So this front cover comes off. There's four rubber feet that just press in. So put it back, you just push, take it off, you just pull. So that is the front cover. It exposes the two disc bays. There is a single dot and a double dot, so I'm kind of assuming that these are kind of like disc one, disc two. 
there's a button labeled push. You push the button labeled push and you pull and then pulls out the tray. So this is the disc tray. Uh, so you will need the screws, okay. So then these side rails, the ends of these side rails come off. And then this fits in like that. And then you mount four screws. All right, double checking the quick reference guide, or the quick start guide. Uh, you don't need screws. So this is the tray. This drive fits in, and you can see it fits like perfectly in into the tray. And then these side rail, what I removed originally, have pins. But instead of screwing them in, you can just use these and they snap in. So that's, you know, very securely in place. So you don't actually need to screw it in. You just take off those side rails and put the drive in and then snap the drive, the snap the side rails back. So that is it as far as installing the drive into the rails. All right, so then this goes in again. I, I'm only installing a single disc. So I am putting it in the one with the single dot, assuming that is a uh, disc one. So to get this in, you push the tab and it slides in place and snaps in. The cover goes back on. Seems a little odd that it's just these rubber, like rubber feet that, uh, what am I doing wrong? Oh, it goes higher. Okay. I can just press it down like that. I guess I can take this plastic. Uh, Oh, gee, that's not coming off easy, is it? Maybe I have to... This is not coming off easy. No, it does not come off. This is becoming the hardest part of the installation so far. There we go. So, do that with the door off. And then, put the door back on. All right, so that is it for setup. Uh, then we plug things in. All right, so I have the power plugged into the 12 volt power port. I have the network cable plugged into that. So there's only two wires that go into the back of this thing. And then these get plugged in, won't bore you with that. All right, so there the NAS sits. And as usual, plugging it in turned out to be one of the more complicated parts because I didn't have a uh, empty plug. <laughs> so I had to get another power outlet strip. All right, anyway, so it is power is plugged in. The network cable is plugged in to the router. And I press the bottom button here is the power button. We have linkage. All right, so now we will, uh, there's, there's no, there's no, uh, monitor attached to this thing so you have to access it through a network device all right so this is the setup guide and it has instructions here so we go to this website to uh, set it up further or if you're doing it from a mobile they give you a barcode for that I'll probably set it up from my laptop so I will probably use the URL I heard a beep. The next thing you do is open a browser and enter find.synology.com. I'm doing this from my laptop, which is on the same local area network which I connected my NAS. It searches my network and found my NAS. Click through the end user license agreement and privacy statement notices. 
and it starts downloading and installing DSM onto the blank disk, which I installed in the NAS. DSM, or Disk Station Manager, is the Synology operating system. At this point, I'm changing things. I was going to explain how to set up and configure DSM, but I'm not going to do that for a couple reasons. One, it would imply that I'm an expert who knows what he's talking about, which I am not. And second, it wouldn't give credit where credit is due. SpaceRex YouTube channel is an expert on this topic. I will include a link to his video, The Complete Beginner's Guide for Synology NAS, in the description below. He has videos on all the features of Synology DSM, and you can even hire him to set up your business network storage solution. How I want to finish this video is to explain how our NAS is working for us now that it's all set up and running as I want it. Quite a bit of time has passed. It took many days to transfer all our photos and videos from Darlene's PC to the NAS drive. Then I set up Windows File History to back up my laptop to the NAS and set up Windows File History to back up Darlene's PC to the NAS. Also, I set up DSM's Hyper Backup to back up the NAS to the external USB drive plugged into the NAS. I can access all our media files from my laptop with Windows File Explorer. I can access all our media files from Windows Live Photo Gallery. Here you can see the media folder from the NAS. This is my preferred photo manager because I can do things like tag photos or videos with things like Bear or North Cascades National Park. And finding all my videos and photos of an animal or park is just a couple clicks away. I can even access all our media files from my phone with Synology's DS File app. In addition to being able to access my files from anywhere, my laptop is being backed up to the NAS, Darlene's PC is being backed up to the NAS, and the NAS itself is being backed up to the external drive. I got everything I wanted from my NAS setup with a moderate cost of $500. I hope this video was helpful in deciding if a NAS is right for your storage solution. Let me know in the comments below. Thanks for watching.